I need to renegotiate the contract because I think I can get a better deal or pricing. Okay, busted, but yes. By all means, if there is a contracting officer anywhere in the federal government who thinks they can get a better deal for the United States federal government, by all means, I would say get a better deal by, for the United States federal government. But I got news for you. RCOs, multiple award schedule COs, they have the right to do that anytime, anywhere, any place. Okay, right? I mean, that's what, that's what they were given a warrant for. And, and they, they can, at any time someone adds a new product, or any time someone raises their prices, or any time someone makes a change to the, you know, certain types of changes to the contract, they have the right to ask for, right, Julia? They have the right to ask, I'm, I'm not a CEO. They have the, but she is. Um, they have the right to do that. And that's what we're pushing. That's the time to do it. Option, let's award that unilateral modification and move on. Affirm that your pricing is still good, let's go. Come in with those new widgets. We're gonna bust you for better pricing, that's our job. Because he wants better pricing for his agency. That's our job too, right? But an option is a unilateral modification as long as you can tell me that when we did our job yesterday on your CSPs, we got good pricing. Does the contractor need to sign the SF30? No. Why? Somebody tell me. It's a unilateral modification. The contracting officer needs to sign it. Okay? That's why. Okay? So that's where we're, that's what we're at. Okay, so what's the burning platform? The burning platform is GSA wants to make sure that our customer agencies have continuity of coverage. The number two burning platform is that we want to make sure that the pricing and the terms and conditions on those contracts with continuity of coverage are as good as they possibly can be at any given time. The number three burning platform in no specific order is that we do 5,000 modifications a month across the country. That's a, I mean, ima imagine if you guys did 5,000. Some of them are like, delete this. No big deal. And we can do some of them like, no problem. And we've put in process improvements to take care of them. But some of them are highly complex uh, I don't know, legal counsel just walked in the room, I don't know, end user license agreements, terms and conditions, novations. All trying to get products and services to our customers. So we're trying to find ways to do this as best as possible and to ensure integrity. Not like how do we do it faster, we want Contracting specialists, speed up, do it faster, do it faster, let's create a machine. Do you know what I'm saying? That's no good. That doesn't work, because then quality is lousy, and everybody hates their jobs. We don't want to do that, right? Um, I promised you contact information. We, like I said, have a feedback mechanism and a Q&A mechanism. It's massopen at gsa.gov. It is an email box. Out of this email box, we have done two sets of FAQs, one internally and one externally. So we really, it is monitored daily by my staff. Um, if you send something in there, whether or not you're internal to GSA or you're external to GSA, it will be read, it will be answered. Um, we have the Vendor Support Center. If you go into the Vendor Support Center, under the Contract Administration tab, there is a specific tab called Options. And there's more detail under there about the options process. Always my plug for Interact, right? If you go to interact.gsa.gov, there's information about options in the blogs. 
And then my personal contact information is always so difficult, right? Just if you can figure out how to spell my last name, you can reach me. <laughs> Question. Really not a question, just a statement. Being a lean six sigma guy, you showed on, I think it was the third slide, three walls of stuff. Somebody like me would like to see if it went down to one. So that would be important if, you know, have somebody like me in the audience to see what it went down to. It did. Actually, this was a lean six sigma project. Um, to tell you the truth, I got my black belt in it. Um, and and black and blue bruise to go along with it. Um, it did, it went down way below one. It's down to those four steps that you saw and a total of, I think, I think we're down to some less than 15 things all together that need to be considered and some of those are duplicative. So for instance that would include EPLS which needs to be checked twice. So I might be slightly off on my number of how many things but the more the keener thing is that they're identical across the program. Um, the only place that's not included in that actually would be the Veterans Administration that has six schedules that they manage right now. Um, we still have to work with them, and there's been a change in, in management over at the National Acquisition Center for VA. So we're give them a little time to settle down. Um, but they're in the middle of looking for the woman who who ran the National Acquisition Center has just accepted an SES position um, at another agency. So when they get somebody on board, we'll work with them and see if we can bring them on board also. But the bottom line is it's come down to less than 20 items and they're identical across all of our 34 schedules. I may have zoned out, but do you um, do the options process through EMOD? The options process is now through EMOD. Okay. Um, but it is um, unlike the other ones because it's unilateral on the part of the government, it is started by our contracting officers as opposed to by industry. But then once that is done, there is a place for industry partners to then load up your things. So when you send your affirmations or you send, let's say you don't affirm, let's say that you send um, new price lists and new documentation, right? It loads up through EMON. We are 100% EMON now. <laughs> 